you've been looking at indolent non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In what setting and why did you try a new agent that basically works in a similar manner to rituximab? So the results that I'm presenting here at ASCO are the primary results of the Gadolin study. So the Gadolin study investigated the combination of a novel anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody called obinutuzumab in combination with bendamustine versus bendamustine alone for patients who were proven to be refractory to rituximab. So the study was looking at patients who are already relapsed or refractory to friar therapy and were shown not to benefit from the rituximab. Could you explain to me what you did in the study then? The study randomized approximately 400 patients, one to one, to receive either bendamustine alone or bendamustine and obinutuzumab. Patients who were responding to that combination treatment were able to go on to get obinutuzumab maintenance for up to two years of therapy. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival, and at a pre-planned interim efficacy analysis, the IDMC actually recommended that the study be reported because it had met its primary endpoint. Now, I have a, some indication that you had quite a big hazard, a good hazard ratio. What, what were the figures, in fact? Correct. So with a median follow-up time of 21 months, the hazard ratio was 0.55, indicating a 45% reduction in the risk of progression in the combination arm. What does this mean, do you think, in terms of treating these patients resistant to rituximab? So, well, importantly, the safety profile was very favorable, so there was very little difference in toxicity between the arms, but certainly a big benefit in terms of efficacy with improved progression-free survival that was virtually doubled with the combination. So the study essentially showed that the combination of the novel antibody with the chemotherapy backbone, in this case the chemotherapy was bendamustine, it actually led to more than a year's benefit in terms of progression-free survival. So really a, a clinically relevant period of time. Right, and you had a, 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 a sufficient patients and it was statistically significant. Correct. Mm. Uh, what do you mean then by saying a clinically relevant or clinically meaningful uh, benefit? How would you in fact think of using this agent? Yeah, well certainly these patients with indolent lymphoma, they develop resistance over time and they become refractory to our standard therapies. This particular population was a group that was already shown to be refractory to rituximab and when they needed to go on to get to their next treatment, the combination of the novel antibody to the chemotherapy backbone, bendamustine, really improved the duration of time that they were able to stay in remission. What's your recommendation to doctors then coming out of this? Well, you know, this is the first randomized controlled trial that's actually shown a benefit for a novel anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody in patients who are refractory to rituximab. So it really is a novel combination that in patients known to be refractory, I think that particularly with bendamustine demonstrates a, a definite improvement in outcome. And in terms of medicine that can be practiced now, what's the take home? So abinutuzumab has been made available because in a prior phase three study, it's already been shown for patients with CLL to provide an advantage in patients receiving chlorambucil. So this is the second you know, broad indication where abinutuzumab now has been shown to be beneficial. So would you use it now for your patients with uh, rituximab refractory non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, indolent lymphoma? Well, based on the results of the study, I'd say there's real compelling reason to use it in combination with chemotherapy as it does provide significant improvement in progression-free survival.